felt like a new era because there was also a kind of sense of romance about it. All the years of privation had passed, and this was a moment to celebrate. Nineteen fifty-three marked a historic moment when film and television brought monarch and people closer together for the first time. It was as if we, the viewers, were actually in Westminster Abbey witnessing the coronation with our own eyes. It was the moment that the Queen became our Queen. find in the newspapers I cut out. Beautifully done. It was obviously a passion. Look, that is pure Hollywood, really. The fairy tale of Hollywood. So this is this is the one that is my favourite photo. This was the beginning of this amazing dedication of her life to this country. starts. The flags lower in tribute as the news spreads. The king is dead. I remember the day the king died and um, it was announced in, in a fairly kind of solemn but abrupt way. And that was the end of the day. And I don't remember how many days we were off school, but that was a moment of great, great, great sadness. life anew. A young queen takes over the burden of monarchy. God save the queen. There was this young English princess who was taking on what everybody thought was the enormous task of being queen of England and also of the Commonwealth, and that struck a deep, deep chord with people. I grew up 
in Anfield in Liverpool. It was a small house, but we had three bedrooms, a um, little garden at the back where my dad grew vegetables and rhubarb. There was still rationing when I was a child. There was a lot of bomb sites. The build-up to the coronation was so exciting. I probably would say it was one of the happiest periods of my childhood. Back then, they didn't make such a hullabaloo about things, but everywhere there was this buzz of, of excitement, of anticipation. The Queen's coronation was a big deal. On the 1st of January, Westminster Abbey closed its doors to visitors so that it could transform itself, the greatest transformation in its history. Railway tracks were laid down here so that materials and supplies could be whisked into the Abbey. And bit by bit, scaffolding grew like these pillars here. Eventually, there would be huge banks of city here. But interestingly, of the whole area of the Abbey, all attention was actually focused on this tiny area here, the intense sacred focal point of the coronation itself. This is where the coronation chair sat facing the altar. With the advent of television, there was a lot of argument about whether the coronation should be shown on the television or not. And there were two cabs. to share this celebration, not just with Britain, but with the rest of the world. What do you want to see me about? stories coming to life. We were looking to the future. We had this, you know, lovely princess who was now becoming a queen. So life was going to be good. exciting thing, especially for a small boy of about 10 or whatever I was. Um, and uh, when we all knew the coronation was going to take place, 
I was at prep school in those days, and we talked about the Coronagas and how splendid it was and what fun it was. The rehearsals were splendid because I had to walk, as did most of my family, the whole length of Westminster Abbey to get to our pews. And of course, to start with, the rehearsals were in ordinary clothes. And then as you got nearer to the day, you find yourself in ordinary finery. Now, I had a very, very smart kilt outfit. frightening but as the time got nearer I became even more frightened when I discovered it was going to be filmed worldwide. We kept thinking that we all fell over or tripped or um, fainted was a big fear. relatively young. It was the most marvellous assignment of my life. I was in a soundproof booth to keep the noise of the cameras inside the booth and not interfering with the coronation. The noise of this camera was such that you had to be in a soundproof box. Would you like to hear them? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I see. It's not, it's not ideal, is it? Every cameraman in the Abbey, they never done anything like it before in their lives. Trinidad was a colony, and it was very, very British. And news of the impending coronation was a time of great, great anticipation. The national anthem was being played everywhere. People in England referred to the Queen of England. Um, we thought she was our queen. and the design is uh, peace and plenty so we have wheat ears, wheat leaves, olives, olive stem and olive leaves as well. I suppose when cameras from above could look down on that sort of long grey, yeah, sort of the been. royal purple, it must have looked amazing. So Mandy, can I can I have a go? You yes, definitely. Go. What I've chosen for you to have a go at is actually, we call it cut work. Yeah, first of all, if you pull the gold right the way down to the bottom, there you are, so it sits snugly on the, the velvet, and then take your needle down in position the other side. And down it goes. Once you've been doing it quite a while, the needle will come up exactly where you want. Yeah, it was good actually. No, yeah, no, you no. got it in the right no. place the first time. <laughs> <laughs> There's an embroidery in you. <laughs> wow. 
my mother had to get samples of the red robe that the Queen was going to wear on her way to the Abbey and the purple robe of estate that she was going to wear after the coronation and produce the makeup and much more important than anything else the lipstick that she was going to wear which would clash with neither and match both too dark and she would have looked almost ghoulish uh, too red and it would then have clashed with the purple coronation robe after the event so it had to be it was a very very fine balance and this was the famous sample from the robe makers it's a very challenging color as you can see i think she went through something like 12 different trials with the cosmetic chemist to find exactly the right tone but i think she did a good job and if you look at the color films of the time um, there doesn't appear to be a clash <laughs> especially for the coronation. I think it was a 14 inch and it had two knobs. One was the off and on and I don't think we ever discovered what the other knob was for. It was, oh no, don't touch that knob. Don't touch that. And you've got this terrible grainy picture, you know, like you're looking through a fog. There's nothing now that's a gadget or whatever that would equal the excitement of this television coming in to our house. And there now exists a fabulous archive of films from up and down the country. I've looked at scores of them. And I think this one from Aberfan and Merthyr Vale in Wales is my favourite. It just has such an exuberance about it, it's such eccentricity. I mean, in some places, it's, it's just plain odd. But apart from anything else, it, the heart of the thing just shines through. It's wonderful. celebrations back in 1953. I'll get this. Hello. Are you Chris? I am. Hello. How are you doing, Alexander? Thank you. Lovely to meet you. How oh, nice to be here. Can we come in? <laughs> no. <laughs> so why do you think everyone was so excited? What was it that you were excited? Was it everybody coming together or was it? Oh, it was lovely and everybody decorated their windows and there was a competition for that and everybody put flags up and the comical thing was that we saw some really funny ladies and in the middle of a couple of the lines they put their big bloomers up in the middle well in the bunting yes you'd have triangle 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 oh, yeah. bloomers triangle tri yeah. <laughs> and everybody used to be laughing yeah. <laughs> it was really funny you know we had a lot of fun and there was the queen i was an attendant to the queen our local farmer donald he gave us the well he drove the tractor and they decorated it beautiful and we'd go around have a van on it which was lovely what's so lovely is you've got this beautiful carriage being driven by the tractor. Tractor. As we were going down through Aberfan, everybody would be out there with hundreds of people and they'd be all clapping and cheering. 
I mean, they all weave in. But I think that's that's a lovely way community works, actually, because these celebrations were going on up and down the country. So every different community had had a kind of link to what was happening in yeah. Westminster Abbey. Yeah, it was lovely. It, you was like felt if you were there anyway, you weren't there really. You, you felt if you were. If, you know, the only thing was missing was her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what must have been going through the mind of this young 27-year-old woman on the 1st of June, right? the coronation now just hours away. Because behind all the pomp and the pageantry was a very simple, very solemn ritual that would be enacted. It would mean that the young woman who walked into the abbey behind me would then emerge as Queen Elizabeth, forsaking normal family life with her two young children, a young husband, and dedicating herself to country and Commonwealth, and as if that weren't enough, doing it in the most visible and public way imaginable. Just like Christmas, but more so, really. It was like Christmas with knobs on. June 1953 dawned chilly and wet, but that was never going to dampen the spirits of the 30,000 people who'd camped out throughout the night in order to catch a glimpse of the Queen the next day. And then throughout the morning, hundreds of thousands of others flooded into London, because by mid-morning there were three million people here in central London to witness this event for themselves. And then kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers from around the world had all come, all in their robes of office and their finery. 750 broadcasters were broadcasting in 39 languages to take this event global. From the moment I woke in the morning, it was exciting. It was like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You know, we want, we want the party, we want the games. You know, we want to watch it on television. in the same sandwich. So hang on, and these were partly to, to keep your pangs of hunger at bay, and also somehow to, to keep to block you, prevent you, block, block block you up. up. We're, 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 mind you, we, 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 had, we did have cast iron bladders in those days, I I'm, think. I'm, I'm some certain idea. you did. Scaffolding pipes <laughs> came in very handy with our feeding, because of course we had banana skins. <laughs> of course you just feed them down. We just dropped them down the scaffolding. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> Yes, we oh, did. God. Yes, even you. And he was meant John to be head boy, head. I'll have you know. <laughs> should be fussing around me before I go off to the Abbey. Uh, do you think I'm capable of doing my own makeup? And my mother said to her, yes, ma'am, I'm sure you're perfectly capable of doing it. And the Queen then said to her, I would like you to be here just in case. She did her own makeup for the coronation. I think it was such a momentous occasion for, I mean, what after all was a young woman. And I think the idea that she had a moment to herself, on her own, um, would have been extremely important to her. It was a foul day. It rained the entire day long. 
cold, it was miserable, it was wet. From our point of view, it was a, a, a wonderful opportunity to have a very large assembly of cousins who came from uh, all over Europe. My mother, Princess Marina, and my sister, Princess Alexandra, and my brother, the Duke of Kent, all four of us were in a carriage, which is rather nice. The, the troops who were doing the street lining were in, very impressive because it was you know, it, it's quite a long way to us from uh, Buckingham Palace. There was an enormous crowd and they had um, uh, periscopes, a lot of them, which were strange looking devices where you looked through a, a, a viewer and it you then went up, and there were just two mirrors, one there and one there, and you could look over the heads of the people in front of you and see what was going on. And so you had a forest of these rather strange looking things, which were sticking out from the crowd. Yes. Do you remember that? I mean, so where did, yes. where did you watch the... We went to the mall. Oh, so, you were there? Yes, just here. Just here. At the foot of these yeah. steps on the mall. Yeah. And you see thousands of soldiers, and it's the pageantry, of the, and the uniforms, the regalia, and the noise of horses walking mm. away, and people's kindness of, of helping kids to see it. Policemen were lifting them up and holding people, and there was there was this extraordinary spirit. All the kids were sitting on the floor. Then the, the very, my nan and all those oldie ones, they were in chairs, paper, you know, sitting around. All the mums and the dads were standing there. There were people looking through the through the doorway. So, to millions of viewers in Great Britain and Western Europe, came pictures of a ceremony and a scene which they will never forget. It, it was mesmerising. A great deal of hustle and bustle and fiddling around and making sure things were put on the right way around. I remember how glamorous the Queen looked, this radiant figure. Occasions where eight grains pull a coach, you have to have as many as that because the coronation coach weighs so much, and um, driving the thing was quite a hidden of responsibility. They held in brakes, for example. And of course, my granddad, who was a bit of a nerd, he would be doing a running commentary, and he'd be giving us all the old, uh, oh yeah, well, the, the, of course, the coach, you know. Yeah, the coach, blimey. That coat's been around 5,000 years and they'd give it all back, you know, didn't they? And, you know, and he'd have a bottle of beer. Right now. Which group of centuries has borne six monarchs to their coronations has never carried one more fitted for the task of sovereignty than she who now is to be crowned. I was one of the ones to take her out of the carriage when she got to the Abbey and um, she didn't appear to me to be in the least bit worried. The Queen turned round and said, shall we go girls? <laughs> Just dazzling. 
the colours were so beautiful, mainly scarlet and of course white for the ermine and women had a wall, had their best jewellery on, tiaras and um, beautiful music. And whenever I hear that music, I feel, you know, pricking in the eyes and catching in the throat. The only time we were separated was when she was anointed. She went and sat alone in the chair. To me, it was incredibly moving because she was giving up her life. She looked vulnerable and young, and one felt that she was taking on a huge burden. Once they'd done that, they put on her robes again, and then the crowning took place. shop so I prepared for it and I wound up the, both spoons to their maximum. When I got to the end of this, it was fully wound just before I heard the spring broke. The only time in my whole experience yeah. I ever had a spring go it was, was in the Abbey on Coronation Day. Isn't that ridiculous? One of my friends, Anglin Connor, she felt very faint. Uh, I felt something moving against my back, and I thought, goodness, what's happening here? Then I realized Anne was slipping down. We wore laurel gloves, and we had smelling salts um, concealed so that you could just pop them if you felt you were going to faint. So she was lifted up by the others and supported. And soon after that, we went into the vestry where the archbishop produced a bottle of brandy. And Anne had a little swig. <laughs> he said, this will do you good. No way I could repair a spring, but I had brought a spare camera body and I just managed to get it all fixed and the door closed and I switched on and I got the shot that they wanted. The climax of the ceremony has arrived when the Archbishop gently sets this splendid emblem on the Queen's head. Oh, here we go. Oh, now, now we're cooking on gas. Yes. Oh, everybody would go into a hush now. Here comes the crown. Straight up. Oh, up he goes. Gently, Bentley. Now 
Yes, there's so much to ask you about. <laughs> Tell me all about your coronation here in Blackburn in 1953. How did it how did it come about? How were you chosen? They put on, they've collected all the names. Yeah. And the names of the kids that were for fairies and all the rest of it. And they put them in this big barrel. And then It's like a sort of the all the names. <laughs> What, what happened in the rehearsals? What were you taught? Everything. Nice. Don't tell you how to weave. So show me your wave. That's the way. Have I got it right? Oh, no, I haven't got the... No, that's not nothing. Oh, oh, right, three. God, I'm not sure. I, I, I couldn't can, be queen. <laughs> and she had you waving. What else did she get you to do? Walking up the stairs. Huh? What did? Like, I'd walk up the stairs regally. <laughs> regally. So when it got to the day, I mean, were you... You must have been really nervous. Yeah, well, we're getting quite excited about it. Yeah. How many people were there? Hundreds of them. And then this, this is the complete thing. Oh, look at that. There it is. The townsfolk and good neighbours of Blackburn are desirous of having a queen to rule over them in matters of joy and festivity during her reign of office. Therefore, it is now appointed that she be crowned Gala Queen in the presence of her subjects who will pledge their loyal devotion, devotation, and willing service. I can do more of this queen stuff. <laughs> I hope you took them up on that. <laughs> you had become the queen, really, haven't you? Yes. You, your job was to go out and, and you know how to go yes. off and shake people's hands yeah. and... Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the queen for a day. I think us all sitting there and talking about it made you feel more a part of, 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 of the whole thing. But to all intents and purposes, there, I know we're sitting in E3, but we are watching Westminster Abbey, we're watching it. You know, we're there. Wonderful. young English Rose and to watch this new age come into being with the coronation of the Queen was a moment to celebrate. It was a wonderful day and a wonderful occasion and amazing to think we're here all these years later. a moment where she takes off the crown which weighs an absolute ton and she put it on the table and Prince Charles who was then about four came running across from the other side of the room saw it lying there and tried to pick it up luckily a lady in waiting swiftly moved in took it away from him and put it high up because he could easily have dropped it. Now to the light of thousands below the Queen and her family step onto the balcony. And we went out on the balcony and the cheering, I've never forgotten that. That was extraordinary. If you look to the right or the left, everybody was cheering and some people were crying with joy. I mean, there was a real kind of feeling of euphoria. We were all rejoicing. <laughs> Now, 
Now look at this. Oh, hey, hi. Look at this. Elizabeth R, 1953. That is the photograph of the kids in Bethnal Green, just before we get sat down to the banquet. There's me, little Lenny boy, and the rest are just the street kids of our street. And God saved the Queen, uh, and then off we went with the food. And course after course, it was honestly, it was, it was like a tasting menu. <laughs> oh, salmon, sat up, yeah. Salmon sandwiches, how posh. Gorgeous. such a treat for you. I don't know how many of you, if any of you, have seen this before, but this is a film that was shot here, right here in Aberfan, on the 2nd of June in 1953. As you'll see, the joy of this thing just shines out of the screen. Anyway, enjoy it, and uh, I'll speak to you all at the end, but thank you again so much for coming. Oh, Solomon, glorious though everything happening in Westminster Abbey was, it occurs to me that something even more magical was happening up and down the country. Communities were taking this as their signal, just to fling their souls into something so joyous, unabashed joy, of a kind that you still feel the warmth emanating down the years. It's 65 years later now, and of course the world has changed. But one thing I found up in Blackburn, here in Aberfan, is that that strong sense of community that was brought alive by events such as the coronation is still alive and strong. And that is surely something to celebrate. <laughs> 